Sorry about that, Mrs. Parker. You know what that was, don't you, Mr. Bowman? In what respect? As a piece of equipment or as a one-upmanship category of possession? That was something extra in my life. That was Harry Mortimer and James Lust. Some beauty for a change. Would you come inside, please, Mr. Bowman, before anybody sees you? I did say I was sorry. And mind that step, I've only just done it. Hey. Lassoe him if he comes back, will you, Jess, and put him on the blower to me. I haven't sold a motor in weeks. But for God's sake, don't let him take it out for a run. The exhaust fumes will kill him. I should be back in circulation again soon, hopefully. Uh, before you go, Mr Parker, you'll be getting a reminder for the telephone bill this morning. I'm not bloody paying it. Ah, huh? uh, ta -da. Open for business, Dave. Consider it of him, brave. What did you call these again, Dave? Vanillas, I think. Mmm. Very tasty. But mind the crumbs now. No fussy mammies about the car. Don't loll in that chair, Mr. Bullman. You'll damage the springs. Sorry. Eight one two four zero six three Grafton Parker Associates. Hang on. It's for you, Mr. Bullman. It's always for him. Excuse me. You've uh, you've not got them slippers yet, Mr. Bullman. Can't get any to fit me. Bullman. You be an M, Pexard. Now don't you stand for it. But Lodger's got his rights. Tell you what, why not try British shipbuilders? They might have a pair of slippers to fit you. Any developments? Well, there could be an interested party. A couple of taffies, Brian, Dave, Williams, brothers. They travel a lot, but they've been seen round and about the patch recently. Like only yesterday, they were buying hunting knives on the high street. You are losing your sense of humour, sir. Well, they're two of a kind. High-class tea leaves, and well into violence. Oh, by the way, what style of slipper were you thinking of? I could do you a red mule with a platform heel very cheap. Oh, such language. I wish you wouldn't swear in the house, Mr. Bullman. He doesn't get to do it. Sorry. This is a respectable house. Yes. You know, I think policemen should give a better example than you seem to, if you don't mind me saying so. Sorry. Have you tried the market? Pardon? For some slippers? No. Well, I would. It's on this afternoon. Oh, God. She's like a dog with a bone, isn't she? Bleeding slippers. She's upset, Mr. Bullman, because of the stereo going back. Yeah. That's why she's going on more than usual. You reckon? It was a bit mean, though, wasn't it? Oh, it was. Well, if you lot hadn't put the frighteners on Bert's sale rooms and got that money back off them, They'd never have come and taken it back, would they? Grafton, son. That money you used to pay for the stereo was snatched out of the stiffening fingers of a dead bank cashier. It was loot, boodle, blood money. You didn't win it on the bleeding pools. But it wasn't exactly me that pinched it, was it? I mean, I only found it. Lit upon it, accidentally like. All I did was put it back into circulation. Which is its function, eh? Well, yes, you might just have a nice ethical point buried in there somewhere, Grafton, I'll grant you that. But not a legal one, nor, in fact, a realistic one. Because whoever did do that bank job and then stashed the money away behind the condom machine and the bricklayer's arms kludgy... By the way, what were you doing fiddling about behind a condom machine? You never did tell me. It's just a sideline I've developed, Mr. Bullman. Hmm? On a good Friday night, I can clear a couple of gross. At half the price you pay in boots. <laughs> I did three gross in Burnley the other week. Amazing. This talent you have for plumbing the absolute depths. You're a scavenger on the rubbish tip of crime. You know that, Grafton? Well, nobody else has thought of it, Mr. Bullman. True. Sorry, Grafton. 
But like I was saying, the lads that did the bank will be wondering what's happening to their money. And I doubt that they'll be swayed by arguments like finders keepers. They're going to be very upset and fairly vindictive. Which, although I know you don't like me reminding you, is what I'm doing here. In case they should call to collect and not finding their money, they'll settle for your red blood corpuscles. Jase. Jase. But how can anybody tumble that it was me that found that money, Mr. Bowman? As I told you, Grafton, the world and his wife knows it was you. Because you went around spending it like today was in doubt. Never mind about tomorrow. But even the chance of the exchequer got wind of it. The money supply figures suddenly shot up. Are you kidding? Aren't you? They won't be kidding. Them, the men from the Black Lagoon. Or in this case, Brian Day from Tony Pandy. Give over, will you? Mr. Bowman? Uh, yes, Mrs. Parker. Will you come up here, please? I'd like a word with you, if you don't mind. I wonder what I've done wrong now. You didn't leave any whiskers in the wash basin again, did you? No, I scrubbed it clean with a loofah. Mr. Bowman! Yes, I'm coming, Mrs. Parker. Just look at the state of that pillowcase, Mr. Bowman. Do you put brilliant in on your hair or something, Mr. Bowman? No, I don't put anything on it. it just naturally greasy. Well, I would wash it oftener if I were you. Can't be changing your pillowcase every day, you know. Mrs. Parker. What? I am a lodger. I you do pay. You are not a lodger, Mr. Bullman. You are a paying guest. So don't go telling anybody that you're a lodger. Now, I wish you'd tidy up all this lot. And put your shoes in the wardrobe. Can't you buy yourself some decent clothes, Mr. Bullman? You look like a tramp. Mr. Bullman, Mr. Willis again. You know, you should be paying something towards that phone as well as your board, Mr. Bullman. Yes, yes. Somebody at the door, Roma, love. Oh, I only hope it's not our Frida. If she finds you here, I shall never hear the last of it. Now, make sure you do know who it is before you open the door, Mrs. Parker. Bullman. Fort Knox, easy than I can from my own home. It's Mr. Bowman's instructions, Mr. Bowman. Yeah. Anyway, well, thanks for the information. I only wish I could think that you had our interest at heart, especially mine. Do you know a bloke called Jess Green? Yeah, he works for me. I was talking to him not an hour ago. Well, apparently, he's been flinging his head at a pair of steel toe caps. Repeatedly. He's in hospital. But why? <laughs> he only polishes the cars. It's yes, nothing. Yes, but uh, he knows where you live, doesn't he? Well, yeah. Yes, he does. Then he's just passed on the information to the owner of the toe caps. Bloody hell. 
It's a right, well-known no, fact, no. Marilyn. Drink does cause no features. <coughs> Tell me uh, what else there is to do around here, ma'am. Well, you could try getting yourself a Excuse steady me. job. Do me a favour, ma'am. Uh, steady jobs I? went out with the Tories. Ask my dad, he should know. He's hardly ever had one. Could I get a word in, please? It's of rather pressing importance. Oh, you're still here, Mr Bullman. I was hoping the dog catcher might have spotted you. Your father has just reached a crisis in his life, Marilyn. What are you talking about, Mr Bullman? What crisis? There's a bloke after me. Two, actually. I hope he's after you, Dad. I don't even think he's a copper. I think he's a nutter. You know, I bet the last house he tried this on, he said he were Napoleon. They've only duffed up Jess Green in the last hour, haven't they, Mr Bullman? Yes. And I'm the next on the list. I don't believe it. You're going to have to believe it, Marilyn. Why? Look, your father is in real, positive, actual, authentic, piano wire round the ghoulie, kneecapping danger. Why couldn't you leave that money where it was, Grafton? You didn't say that when I were buying you that fancy stereo, did you? You didn't buy me anything, when did you? When did you last buy me anything? Look, I know that the family is the most violent arena in the entire field of human relationships, but will you call a truce now, please, for Grafton's sake? Yes. Now, what do you want us to do, Mr Bullman? Well, for the start, no one leaves this house from now on. No one. Drop dead. I've got a fella to see tonight. No one leaves this house, Marilyn. Any one of you could cop for it. They could get back at Grafton through you. That wouldn't worry him, as long as he were all right. I don't understand why they don't have more policemen. Not in here. I mean, outside and that. Because he's not just here to guard me, Dad, is he? I mean, what he wants is for whoever he imagines is coming after me, Dad, to actually come. So he can nick him. Preferably after they've kicked me Dad to death. Because then they've got an open and shut case. But only the bait in the trap. Oh, well, you've had me, cos I'm off out tonight. You're not going out, Marilyn. Try stopping me. Can't you control her, Grafton? After all, she's your bl... She's your daughter. She doesn't take much notice of me, Mr Bowman. Never has. Mrs Parker, please... Look, I won't have room. any rough stuff in this house, Mr Bowman. I mean, everybody says what a nice home I've got. I I'll not have it... Knocked about. Is that understood? Yes. And don't forget them slippers this afternoon. It's the last time I shall tell you. Right. What are you going to do, Mr. Bullman? I don't know. I feel like my brain's turned to foam rubber. It's the wife and Marilyn. They have that effect on me. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I can do, Grafton, while Marilyn's safe upstairs, uh, making hand grenades or whatever her hobby is. I can go and have a word with my all-wise superiors. Now, keep the door locked, don't let anyone in, and I'll try to get a panda car to keep a discreet eye on the house. But it's not true what Marilyn says, Mr Bullman. I'm not the bait, am I? Of course you're not, son. Bulky sort of fellow, Brian. Coppers don't get enough exercise. Could be why they're losing the war against crime. You'd be hoping your brother's up here if you could check it for me, mate. Even if we're wrong about him, he'll likely slip you a box of alibi. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, uh, come about the radiator, have you, mate? It's that one over there. It keeps leaking. And it's getting very embarrassed about it. You know what, Willis? You're about as witty as a man, old cover. It's you, Sarge. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be guarding Grafton Parker with your very life? That's why I'm here. My life is up for grabs, isn't it? With Brian Dave on the loose. So I want some assistance, don't I? Like yourself. Sorry. Oh, it's dead easy, Derek. You just sit around all day with your feet up, watching Crown Court. Look, I'll even uh, give you a lend of these slippers I just bought. Well, for a consideration. I'm otherwise engaged. What doing? There's a svelte, lissom, husky-voiced boutique owner. 
You reckon she keeps being followed by a heart surgeon wearing nature tracks? Actually, somebody keeps nicking lorry loads of fish. Mm. What's Linda doing? Linda? With a very fair chance of violence down there. I mean, the Williams brothers haven't left the principality for a change of air, Sarge. Why do you want help, anyway? There are two of them. What's the real reason? Just told you. Sarge? Well, it's Mrs Parker and a cow of a daughter, isn't it? I mean, a man could be driven just so far. Oh, I don't know, Sarge. I think you've got a fair mileage in you yet. I mean, look at those wide shoulders and the short, thick neck, the square, solid head. All go to make a man a fantastic resilience. Very nearly bionic. You can scoff, Willis. You can bloody scoff. But either I get some assistance or... or the force is going to be another one under strength. I left here in 1940, you know. All right, George. Yes, sir. I went to Bristol making Spitfires. Cheer up, it might never happen. It's happened to him, isn't it? It's what makes me so fireproof, or you, or anyone else. Well, you're in a state. Or as I would put it, I feel that the great puppeteer in the sky hasn't got any strings tight enough. Yes, love? Pint your bitter, please, love. Certainly. That's what we're here for. How do you? I left here in 1940, you know. I went to Bristol making Spitfires. He's harmless. 28, love, please. Sorry, love. I'll have to be a fiver. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen you in here before. Nope. Hello, Briscoe. I know that bleeding voice anywhere. Bullman. Is it you responsible for... I thought you might like a change of scenery. See how we operate in a big pond. So I asked for your body. First time I've seen it, considered. Hey, I love. Watch out. Your taste, is it? Huh? Beer. Oh, yes, it's all good. Come along. So what's the job? And why me, mate? I think you'll find the job interesting enough, Briscoe. Why you? Well, let's say one reason. It's on account of you being a ladies' man. The lady of the house, Dave. She's left the door open. I think we should invite ourselves in for a cup of tea and perhaps a thin slice of seed cake. Good idea. Alison will have to wait for a postcard. Can't think what to write anyway. Aye, aye. Mr. Big again. And friend. That's a bit of a face, isn't it? Where are we going for Pete's sake? This is the right cowboy town. All will be revealed. My wife thinks I've gone to the flesh pots of London, you know that. Yeah, it must have a very low credibility threshold, your wife. On account of some very traumatic experiences. You know, this is beginning to smell, Bowman. Any particular odour? Yes. Another fit up. Another go at proving I'm bent. I've got better things to do. Look at that silly bitch. Mrs. Parker, I told you to stay inside the house. I've got to do my work, you know, Mr. Bowman. I've been strengthening the watch. This is a colleague, Mr. Briscoe. Where's he going? He's arrived. He's staying here with me. Mind that step. Can't you see I've just done it to get you great big... Boo-boo. Are you any different? Oh, I think you'll find I'm a lot more suave, Mrs. B. Where have you been, Mr. Bullman? Having your ears pierced? Where have you been, Mr. Bullman? I was getting worried. Looking after your interests, Grafton. Uh, we're in here, Mr. Briscoe. This is Mr. Briscoe. He'll be assisting me in my vigil from now on. Mr. Briscoe, Grafton Parker, and Marilyn, the daughter of the house. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Briscoe. And pleased to see you. How do you, Grafton? Two Mickey Mouse coppers now. 
Where do they keep finding you? Disneyland? Marilyn goes in for some very colourful language, don't you, Marilyn? She looks a very colourful lady from where I'm standing. Hmm. Come along, Briscoe, then I'll show you to your, uh, to your room. That should be a laugh. Be seeing you. I hope you'll be very happy together. If we're not, you'll be the first to know, love. They're taking it very seriously, aren't they? They'll still feed you to the dogs, Dad, given half the chance. In here, Briscoe. One bed. Oh, going on two in actual size. Oh, sorry, Bullman. There's no way I'm going to be spoons in there with you. All right, I'll organise a camp bed. And you'll sleep on it. Oh, it's a mean room, Bullman. In a mean house. Yeah. They're a mean family. Except for one thing. Just one thing. It's escaped me so far. Well, his name? Crafton Parker. <laughs> well, he's christened after a ballroom. How about that for originality? Well, I know a bloke called Morris Oxford. After the car. He was conceived in the back of one. Oh, look, why don't we just leave them to whatever? Then I can get back to the flesh pots of London and you, well, to whatever turns you on. Like sitting in the KGB entrance exam. The Parkers don't interest me. They're the dark side of the moon, as far as I'm concerned. But those two taffies dressed as firemen and wearing breathing apparatus that knocked off that bank, they interest me greatly. And sooner or later, they're going to have a go at Grafton because they're sadistic and vengeful. And I want to be here when they do. She likes a postcard, does Alison? Funny like that, women, aren't they? I don't suppose I can tell her when we might be back. Hard to say no, Dave. Hard to say. The ladies before gents, Mrs. P. Oh, no, no, go on, Mr. Briscoe. No, 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 I insist, Mrs. P. Oh. There you are, then, love. Can I have a lot of mushy peas, Roma? You wait your turn, Grafton. Enough mushy peas there for you, Mr. Briscoe. Just right, Mrs. P. How did you know my favourite fruit was fish and chips? <laughs> well, you should like these, then. They're normally very good for Ashcroft. What I always say is that if you can find one good pub and one good fish and chip shop in one lifetime, you've not done so bad. Well, I don't know about the pub, but you can have a few more mushy peas if you like, you know. All right, Mrs. P, <laughs> go on. You know, I'm going to do what you. Why? Well, you know what they say. The way to a man's heart is through his stomach. Oh, don't be daft. <laughs> You know, there's one thing we've not settled yet, Mr. Bullman. Well, what's that, Mrs. Parker? Well, I should be expecting the same off Mr. Briscoe as what I'm getting off you. Three pounds a day, full board. Ah, now I've been giving that matter a great deal of thought. And working on the well tried and tested principle that you can feed two as cheaply as one, I thought a total of five pounds a day for the pair of us. You old skinflint. Don't let him get away with it, Mum. Well, I don't know about that, Mr. Bullman. What, what do you say, Mr. Briscoe? Oh, you've put me on a spot, Mrs. P. Good and proper. Oh. Well, it's the taxpayers' money after all. Absolutely. That's why Mr. Bullman's been giving it such a lot of thought. Exactly. But I agree with Marilyn, and he is a skinflint. You think you think three pounds each is fair, then, do you? Oh, absolutely, Mrs. P. Don't you agree, Mr. Bullman? On reflection, like. All right. What's that? I thought I heard something. Out the back. That could be next door's cat in the dustbin again. She never feeds it, you know. No. That one, no cat. Right, you lot stay here. Come on, Briscoe. Jesus. Oh, it'll be nothing. I've got my best sheets on the line. Remember, the Williams brothers may not carry shooters. But they're very sophisticated villains. You can watch a lot of telly. Hi, Gowbleman. He looks dangerous. Who are you? What are you doing here? What's your name? Wayne. Wayne Dobson. What are you doing in here? Nicking that stuff, were you? No. Is it yours? Yeah. Where did you get it? Found it. Now, Wade, you're not talking to your music teacher, son. You're coppers, aren't you? What are they doing out there? You never know, Dad. They might be planting a few Brussels sprouts for you. 
You wouldn't find it funny if you were in my shoes, lady. I just hope they haven't touched my sheets. Look what we found in the potting shed. Wayne! The six million P-man. Shut it, you. What was he doing? Only trying to hide stolen property. To wit, a sack full of scrap lead in your shed, Grafton. Are you trying to get me in trouble, Wayne? Hid it there before, Uncle Grafton. You know I am. It was you that flogged the last lot for me. He's not quite all there, Mr. Bowman. I am all there. I can play chess. Can you really? Yeah. Well, anyway, all there or not, he knows we're the old Bill, so he's joining us. Joining us? You mean to live here? Well, he's got to, hasn't he? He knows we're the law. We can't have him spreading it all around the estate now, can we? He's not living here, Mr Bullman. Definitely not. No way. Why not? He's a blood relative. We don't speak his mother and me. We've not spoken since the... How glad is his funeral? He's trouble, Mr Bullman. And ponds. You can talk. Yo-yo, knickers. No, she has bust me now. Get me a dishcloth before it makes a stain. Marilyn! Oh, do you know this is all your fault, Mr. Bullman? Come in here. I'm trying to protect your husband. Well, take him somewhere else and protect him. Will you hurry up with that dishcloth, Marilyn? Oh, my nose, it's killing me. Oh, my wall, just look at it. Oh, it's not that bad, ma'am. Oh, my nose hurts. I'm belt up, Wayne. Oh, my wall. Can I have your mushy peas, Roma? They'll only get cold. Jesus. No wonder everyone wants to be middle class. Can you see it now? Grafton! What? Can you see a mark now? No. Mr Briscoe, can you see a mark now? Oh, not a sign, Mrs P. Clean as a slate. Oh, it'll never be that. My mum will be wondering where I am, you know. The last time your mum wondered where you were was when she'd heard that they'd found another wolf boy in India. Don't need to ask who that'll be for. You want me to take that, Mr. Bullman? No, it's all right, Doctor. Well, uh, Bullman. I just thought I'd let you know I'm going off duty now. So you're on your own till 9 a.m. But if it's any comfort to you psychologically, I will be on call, ready and willing to spring to your assistance in an emergency. I'm not. I'm very hurt, sir. Oh, by the way, we had a possible sighting of Brian Dave buying hot pies and a crusty loaf at a shop just down the road from you. But the Bobby wasn't definite. How are you coping now with the ladies of the house? Well, you know, we're still having our ups and downs. You mustn't be afraid of women, Sarge. They're only human beings like we are. Not all that much difference between us all, really. Well, uh, just here and there. I won't be a tick, darling. Right, I'll be off then, to my bachelor pad and my virgin couch. Good hunting. Oh, and uh, sleep with one eye open, just in case Brian and Dave do come calling. Just checking if my granddad's all right. He likes me to keep in touch. So what's new? Them two blokes haven't been seen again, have they? Where do you think you're going? Out. I said not. And I said, John, stop me. Briscoe. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on her. Where does she usually go when she goes out grafting? Don't ask me. Mrs P? This wall will have to be redecorated. She goes in the raglan. I've seen her in there. There's an Indian behind that tree. Tell me how it ends, will you, Wayne? Oh, Luford and the bird get killed. I've seen it before. Oh, happy ending, is it? See you later. And, uh, watch it. There's another Indian behind that tree now. Well. There you are, love. The colour of gold. 28. To you. Thank you. Where's the plane maker? Who? Oh, you mean old George? Who left here in 1940 to, to make, make spit fires. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be in later. He never misses. You're on this place in your own, Lindy. The landlord's sleeping it off. Usually is. Ah. He must trust you. Got no option. Where's the landlady? She left him last week. 
ran off with a cigarette. Can leave somebody to wash his socks then? Hey, don't look at me. I've had one bad experience with a drunk like he wiped his feet on ten years of my life. Not again, thank you. Are you married? Hmm. Still, it's not incurable. Do you know the girl sitting at the table right behind me? Young Marilyn, she just left. That bloke a friend of hers? He is now. I haven't seen her with him Excuse before, me. though, but... Hey, what about your beer? Hey, what do you think you're doing? Doing? I'm not doing anything, love. Just get in the car, there's a good girl. Get your bloody hands off me! I'm not getting in there, not with two of you. Marilyn, can I have a word if it's not too inconvenient? On your way, Squire. Ah, oh, well, I would, uh, normally. Being a great believer in minding my own business, but it's, uh, these two fellas, you see. Why? What two fellas? Two fellas in blue uniforms outside pub. They'd be round this corner like ferrets if there was a commotion. They're like that, fellas in blue uniforms. <laughs> you bitch! Oh. Hey, you became a cropper there, didn't you, mate? Leave it, Brian! Come on, get in. You all right, look? Yeah. Were they, uh... Brian Day, your Welsh wizards. Why didn't you try and lick them? I think Bullman wants them for something a little bit more villainous than ruffling your decorum, darling. Just what I've been saying all along. Come on. I'll buy you gin and orange. I think they think they're being clever, Dave. But we've got the patience, right? I think that alarm clock of yours is beginning to get a bit unnecessary. Yes. Uh, I suppose it is. Well, it reminds me of home. Did you hear what that said? She reminds me of home. The wife sounds like her in mourning. Like a parrot inside an oil drum. Don't all women sound like that in the morning? No. I know a bird in Rochdale who just purrs in the morning. <laughs> Mind you, she always has something to purr about. All right, Mrs P, we're just coming. See you do, Mr Briscoe. Come on, Bullman. Get out of your pit. Oh. Don't think I can stand another day here, Briscoe. Well, oh, it's getting a bit fraught, I'll grant you. Feel like... I'm adrift at sea in an open boat with a bunch of Millwall supporters. I don't know, though. It has some compensation. Uh, yeah. Like Mara Lynn, to name but two nymphomaniacs. Your orders were for me to get friendly with the natives, Bowman. You were very clear on that point. You're an animal, Briscoe. An unthinking animal. Animals are fairly happy, though. Take a rabbit, bombing about in sunshine, nossing away on dandelion leaves, and back home for Chucky. <laughs> Sex is the cream in the bun of life, and everybody likes a cream bun. Yeah. <clears throat> While you've been stuffing yourself with cream buns, I've been putting my trained mind to work. How exactly? Uh, you'll see. Things should start happening today. If they don't, I really am going to jack this lot in. They can turn Grafton loose in a safari park at feeding time, for all I care. I've got a feeling about today, Bray. Something in the soft summer air. Hey, I hope you're right about today, Dave, because Mam wants us back by the weekend. Don't forget it's the anniversary at the chapel. We don't miss that, do we? Not if we value our lives. 
Good morning, Grafton. It's not, you know, Mr. Bowman. Oh, don't you go all sullen on me. I've enough to put up with from your missus. You're interfering with my livelihood, Mr. Bowman. What livelihood? If you mean I'm interfering with your nicking Save the Children collection boxes out of pubs, I should think so. I'm a copper. You're stopping me from going to school and I'll... You? You got the Truant of the Year award in the infants. So shut it, the pair of you. I'm in a very bad mood today. I've got a letter. There's one for you too. Oh. Well, aren't you going to open it, Grafton? I mean, you can't get all those many letters. It's not as if you're an international celebrity, is it? Be a circular, Mr. Bullman, offering me a British Leyland franchise. They won't leave me alone. Morning, everybody. Morning, Mr. Briscoe. Doesn't look like a circular to me. No, it will be. Well, I'm here, Mrs. P. The gastric juice is ebbing and flowing in anticipation. Mrs. P. You'll have to go. You can't stop here another minute. Well, what is it, Mrs. P? Bad news? Read that letter. It's not bad news, is it, Roma? Oh, dear. Who's it from? Who's it from, Roma? There's a load of old cobblers, isn't it? A load of rubbish. Let me have a look. It's not rubbish, Mr. Bullman. That's what they're thinking about me round here. I've suspected it, really. I've, I've had some funny looks when you've been shopping with me. Mr. Bullman's right. This is daft. You and Mr. Bullman. You know, the one thing I've always had round here was respect. Oh, they gave it me grudgingly, but, but they had to give it me. I kept my house nice, and I, I kept myself to myself. Which is more than can be said for a lot of the women on this estate. Two Tia Marias on a Saturday night and they don't even bother to ask a fella his name. Now that letter's saying that I'm no better. But it's a load of rubbish, love. I mean, it's not true. It doesn't matter if it's true enough, Grafton. That's not the point. I mean, they think that Mr Bullman and Mr Briscoe, for all I know, well, they think... Well, you've read what they think. But that's the first time you've ever been called a fancy man, Mr. Bullman. It's not funny, Mr. Briscoe. I'm sorry, Mrs. P. Oh, go on, name me one. Even that letter's anonymous. Well, one thing's for sure. I'll not give them any more excuse to talk about me. Mr. Bullman, Mr. Briscoe, I want you out of this house today. I'll go and talk to her. Oh, do that, Grafton. Oh, yeah, um, you're forgetting your letter. Could be wrong. Might not be a circular. For somebody who's just had everything turned to rubble in his hands, you don't look all that unhappy, Mr. Bullman. Oh, I'm still in there punching Briscoe. I think it's got a lot to do with me being reasonably celibate. Do you fancy a game of chess, Mr. Bullman? Yeah, why not, sir? Hang on, I'll get it. Go and join the brownies, Willis, if they'll have you. And leave the men's work to the men. Oh, just one thing. I think we might need a car today. A car? No, what's he up to? He's been typing solid for three days now, Jackson. You've not got another Operation Julie going, have you? Guys, please. Where's your dad? Love. Check, Mr. Bowman. Rubbish. You are, you're in check. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Didn't see your bishop there. Mum's still saying you'll have to go, you know. There. Is she? Can't you ask him my five to find you another job round here? It's not easy, darling. I'm only seconded, you see. I'm really a captain in the household cavalry. Check again, Mr. Bullman. Hmm? Check. Oh, yeah. I'm going to really have to start trying with you, son, aren't I? What's that? Sounds like my dad going out. There you are, Bray. It's that something in the soft summer air you felt. Yes. And it's called retribution.
Marilyn, supposing your father found himself in possession of a tidy sum of money, where would he be likely to go to spend it? Like how much? Hundred? Where'd my dad get hundred quid? Say he did. Oh, well, he'd be straight round the betting shop, wouldn't he? Or he might just... Uh... What? Well, with hundred quid, he'd fancy himself, so he might go to the Argonaut. What's that? Oh, it's a gambling club, you know, roulette and that. <laughs> Grafton playing roulette? <laughs> well, he found this membership card, see? It goes by the name of Ashley Hogarth, would you believe? Oh, yeah. Right, Brisker, we better get down there. Sorry about that, Wayne, just as I was winning, too. You win. Ah, but you don't know what my grand strategy was, do you, son? Where did my dad get hundred quid? Funny enough, in the post. Come along, Mr Briscoe. See you later. You are coming back. I've left me ratting cap upstairs, haven't I? Don't suppose you can play chess. Of course, I do know you by reputation. All bad, according to George here. Terrible. What's your opinion of him? A bit devious. You reckon? Well, look at this caper. Not devious, Willis. Beautifully simple. Not to me, it isn't. Look, Grafton thinks that, that hundred quid is a present from Brian Dave, doesn't he? To help him swear that he never found all that loot. So he thinks he's in the clear. Brian Dave are off his back. And he breaks cover. That's it. Well, we were getting nowhere with him lurking down his rabbit hole. So let's see what happens when he's in the open. The trained, disciplined mind at work again, Briscoe. Always thinking, not being constantly diverted by lust. I managed to think and a lost woman. Mm. You'll probably die younger than I will. It's next left. Please. I know this wheel. It'll be on this section here between ten and nine for half a dozen spins now. You think so, do you? No danger. If you want no, to win no yourself way. a few quid, now's your chance. Six plus. I don't understand that. I don't understand that at all. Five pounds on blood. I wonder if it's a new wheel. I've got a fairly good system. Have you? A not foolproof, mind you, what system is. But it does its best for me. Simple, is it, uh, this system of yours? An experienced player. Somebody like yourself shouldn't have much difficulty grasping it. I don't suppose you could... Well, explain it to me. I don't know not about that. For nothing, of course. The turf's my scene, really, and I could do you a good turn now and again. I get some beautiful information. Do you now? Oh, beautiful. That sounds like a fair exchange to me. But uh, I can't tell you here too many years. Should we uh, go for a slash? Ah, why not? I want one anyway. <laughs> Madam, we are police officers. And I'm a mother superior on a day off. We are, really. Look at the size of our feet. Well, you two might be, but he looks more like a bum down on his look, and we don't allow that class of person in here. What am I? Copper. God help us all. No sign of it. Gotta be here somewhere. The geezer she described could only be Grafton. Unless he's broken the bank and he's comforting the manager in his office. Grafton couldn't win it, snap. Aye, aye. Brian Dave. They tried to leave the premises, Willis. Nick em. I wish you'd stop giving me the easy jobs. Where's Grafton? 
Who? Grafton Parker. I don't even know the name. You do? No, Bray. You two should be on the stage, you know that. Just to say that this place is lousy with commerce. Am I right, Mr. Briscoe? They're popping out of the woodwork, Mr. Bowman. Is he still breathing? Yes. Yes. Well, it's worth booming. Or has it? Yes. We wheel those two in now for something substantial, which is a start. It's more than we had before. Just wish we could have got to him a bit earlier, that's all. We would have done if you hadn't looked so bleeding and scruffy. Get an ambulance. Yes. We're away, Mrs. Parker. Grafton will be all right, you know. He'll be home in a couple of weeks, good as new. By then, uh, Mrs. Parker, Marilyn, and thanks for having us. Oh, um, I left that money upstairs on the chest of drawers. Three pounds a day each, as we agreed. Cheer, then. Bastard. You were just using him as bait, weren't you? Look, Marilyn, if you play with fire, you get burned. If you want to keep Bowman and me out of your lives, all you've got to do is to make sure that they stay honest and industrious. Go on, spread it around. I don't care if I become redundant. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Oh, what's a wall, love? <sighs> you are, such? Yeah. Wonderful, thanks, Derek. Just suffering from a spot of culture shock, that's all. Come again, sir? Well, just look at it out there. The Albania of the North. I thought you said you liked working up here. You said it was growing on you. Mm. Like a boil. Do you know, Briscoe, that even the smallest provincial town in Germany has got its own opera house? What have we got here? Bingo halls and betting shops. Uh, that's not so bad, Sarge. Not for you, granted. Any town that's got a football team, a takeaway Chinese, and a bleeding massage parlor is home from home for you. I've been thinking a lot recently. Under the Treaty of Rome, free movement of labour and all that, I was wondering if I could apply for a transfer to Florence. Or maybe Venice. You've just been working too hard, Sarge. You'll be all right now. Weekend off. Nice 48-hour pass. Yes, what are you going to do this weekend? I think I'll go up into the hills, Briscoe. Drink a bit of real ale, have a nice long think and a bit of a lie down in the long grass. Because I think you're right, we're all in need of spiritual refreshment and a short sabbatical. But could you just slow down a minute then? I'm ahead of you, Sarge. What do you reckon, Sarge? A bit odd, eh? Well, the main question is, Willis, is he halfway up that drain pipe or is he halfway down? Exactly. Because it, but it's now half past five on a Friday. And if he's halfway up, it could develop into a long and complicated case. And if he's halfway down, he'd have scarper before we could catch him. I'd second that. So, drive on Macduff. What I always say, Willis, is there are 10,000 unsolved crimes in the naked city. And that could very well be one of them. Mm -hmm.